our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our focus this morning is both the Palm Sunday reading plus the reading from our Passion. You know, as we, we begin Palm Sunday, the parade has begun. God is entering his kingdom, going to the holy city, Jerusalem. And people, as John tells us, were throwing the palm branches down before him, laying their cloaks on the ground, crying out with a loud voice, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. There was a sight, excitement in the air as Jesus was entering the city. The king had come. But boy, do we have a lot of confusion surrounding everything going on with Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. With a week later, the crowds then turning on him and the shouts becoming crucified. You know, for many years as I preach this text, I always talked about Jesus coming as the lowly servant, entering the city on a donkey when you would expect the king to come in on a white stallion showing victory over the enemy. But that's not Jesus. But you know, as we look at this text, it's no wonder in the church that we treat it the way we do. Because when we look at the Palm Sunday reading and then as we go into the Sunday of the Passion, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of discord, there's a lot of angst going on. Jesus entering the city triumphant as a king, Jesus leaving the city to be crucified, to die for us. But there's also a lot that goes on in this Palm Sunday reading that we don't pay a lot of attention to. For instance, who was the first Israelite king to enter the city riding on a donkey? It isn't Jesus. King Solomon, as he enters his kingdom after King David gives up the throne and his son Solomon is going to be made king, he enters Jerusalem, as the Old Testament tells us, riding on a donkey. Because that's how Israelite kings entered the city. Or, as we see in the other Palm Sunday readings, Jesus telling the disciples to go and get this colt. This young donkey that had never been haltered before, never been ridden before. And what do the disciples do but throw their cloaks on that donkey and Jesus sits on it. Now, I grew up around horses. I know a lot of you have horses as well. And while I worked at the vet for my five years during college, we worked on quite a few horses, and one thing you never did was hop on a horse. The other thing you never did was trust a horse. But can you imagine throwing cloaks on a horse that has never been saddled before, never been haltered before, and then hopping on it? I don't think it'd be a good sight. In fact, I could imagine you'd be laying on the ground probably half dead, wondering what just happened, and the horse would probably be gone. But here is the Son of God being placed on a donkey that has never been ridden before, never had anybody on its back, and taking it through a parade of people shouting out and crying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And the donkey treads on, heading into Jerusalem like it happens every day. 
and the people celebrate Hosanna. Hosanna to the son of David. Hosanna comes from the Hebrew. Actually, they were saying Hoshana. Hoshana, save us now. That's literally what it means. Save us now, Jesus. Save us this day, Jesus. As he comes into the city. You see, the people were looking for their king. Their king that was going to come and take care of all of their earthly needs. Their king that was going to come and overthrow the much-hated Roman government. The king that was going to come and be there for them so that they would have no more problems, no more worries. When they hurt, they could go to their King Jesus and he would make them feel better. When they were sick, they could go to their King Jesus and he would heal them. Giving them everything they wanted and it would be glory on earth. So they cried out, Hosanna to the son of David. Save us now. Be that king. Come heal us. Come take care of us. Come be what we want you to be. And make everything right and perfect on this earth. It became so bad that the Pharisees were trying to figure out what to do with him. And at the end of our gospel lesson, they say, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now something has to be done. This king is a threat to all of us. If he does come into Jerusalem and if he does overthrow the Roman government, where would our power be? For they were allowed to do as they wished under Rome. If he does become their king, will they look to us as the religious authority? Something has to be done. Which immediately takes us to our passion reading. The plan was set in place. Jesus must die. And so we see Judas Iscariot giving Jesus over for 30 pieces of silver. We see Jesus in the garden praying that this cup may be removed from him. Blood coming off of his forehead just like sweat. We see the Garden of Gethsemane as the Roman soldiers are there to arrest Jesus. As Peter pulls out his sword and cuts off Malchus's ear. And as they lead Jesus away, the disciples running in fear, afraid for their lives. Where is the parade? Where is the party? Where is the Hosanna to the Son of David? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Where is the Jesus? Save us now. But we also see that as Jesus is suffering and hanging on the Christ, on the cross, what are they crying out? If you are the Son of God, save yourself and us. As Jesus cries out that he is thirsty, what do they say? Wait and see. Let's see if Elijah comes to help him. Let's see if the angels come to take him down. Hosanna, save us. Save yourself. And Jesus breathes his last. And the curtain is torn in two and the earth shakes and it seems like death has won again. The parade has turned into a funeral procession. What are we going to do now? This is the Jesus. For three years he has been teaching us. Three years he's been preaching to us. For three years we have listened to him. We have seen him heal the sick. We have seen him raise the dead. What are we going to do now? 
as the disciples hide in fear, as the women mourn at the foot of the cross, as Joseph of Arimathea goes and asks for the body of Jesus to be placed in the tomb, where is the hope? What are we going to do now? It appears that all is lost. It appears that death has won again. The last three years all for naught. Jesus is dead. Their hope is dead. Their dreams are dead. We know the rest of the story as we will celebrate next Sunday. But even that's not the end of the story because John gives us another glimpse of the triumphant entry. And in Revelation, John's glimpse isn't the triumphant entry into Jerusalem, but it's the triumphant entry into heaven. Because death could not win. Because God had a plan, and God has a joyous ending, beginning just like he did with Jesus' entry in Jerusalem. Only it's not the crowds crying out, Hosanna to the son of David. It's not the crowds laying down the palm branches in front of Jesus as he enters into his holy city. No, the vision John gets is each and every one of us it's a vision of the last day as we stand in the parade, as we cry out, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who has come into his kingdom as we usher Jesus onto his throne to sit at the right hand of God our Father, victorious over sin and death, victorious for us, giving us, giving us heaven giving us life eternal with him. So we wave our palm branches. We rejoice with the Son of God who has set us free from sin, death, and the agonies of the devil. You see, because the story continued. It didn't end with Jesus entering Jerusalem. It didn't end with Jesus leaving Jerusalem to be crucified. It didn't end at his resurrection or his ascension into heaven. The story goes on with us as we as Christians live it. And as we as Christians look forward to it. To that day when we will be part of the story. That day when we will be in the parade. That day when we will be invited to God's party. And on that last day when we will stand before our God and rejoice and give thanks to him. That's the true triumphant entry. That's the true Palm Sunday. And that's the day we look forward to. And that's the day we can celebrate now. As we wave our palm branches to the glory of our Lord. As we cry out our hosannas this day, save us now, Jesus, because you already have. As we eat and drink his body and blood, we know that salvation has come to us. And as we leave today, we leave victorious. Victorious by the blood of the Lamb who was shed to set us free. We rejoice. We give thanks. And we praise our God on high who suffered all to give us life. So rejoice. Cry out your hosannas to the Lord because Christ has saved us. Christ has come. And it's not over yet. The end of the parade is yet to come. When we will join all the saints in heaven and when we will stand face to face with God and when we will cry out our own hosannas. 
as we welcome Jesus to the throne and as he welcomes us, the glories of heaven. We rejoice. We give thanks. Because the King of Israel, the Son of David, God in the flesh has come for us. Hosanna to the Son of David. Amen. Now may the peace of God, the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, guard and protect your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I ask you to stand at this time as we continue with the confession of our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in our bulletin. I believe. 